This week on Kentucky Afield. A kid's first hunt is something they'll always remember. In the fast flying, fast shooting action of a dove hunt is hard to beat. <laughs> Next, Kentucky is home to some amazing rivers and we're floating what might be the best of them. You got a brook trout. Yeah, how about that baby? Then, get your big rod ready. We're throwing the A-Rig at Laurel Lake. It's all next on Kentucky Field. Such a pretty fish. Beautiful. This pond is plum floated with frogs. They're everywhere in here. <laughs> yeah, this is a good fish right here. Really good fish. Come here, girl. Hey, boy. That's a big rabbit. Nice job. Yes! Yes! <laughs> my first musket. <laughs> Mercy Leo! Yeah, we can't get the keeper. Here it goes! Boom! Oh. Wow, that happened fast. Hello, and welcome to Kentucky Field. I'm your host, Chad Miles. Join us as we journey the Commonwealth in search of outdoor adventure. What can be more exciting than taking a limit of 15 doves? Watching a young person take their first dove. So the number one very first thing today is safety. I know it's your very first dove hunt and I'm super excited for both of you. So this ought to be a lot of fun. So Nolan, you, uh, you sit here and we're gonna walk down. Look, there's one flying out of the tree right there. There's another one. Two more flying out of the tree. Let's pretend that a bird's coming by. All right, do I turn the safety off for this Leave one? Leave the safety on for, for this, but all right, look, there's a bird right there. Okay, now I would stand up, okay? I would stand up, now follow it, okay? Now look, folks are down there, so you can never shoot beyond, even close to the road, okay? Okay. Your field of shooting, listen, your field of shooting is right out here, okay? Okay. Never go low, and never go in that direction where other people are, okay? Okay. Safety is on. So you know before you shoot, you gotta put your finger right there and push, and then you can shoot. It'll only shoot once. And then you gotta go, and then it'll take your finger off, and then pull the trigger and shoot again. And it'll shoot up to three times, and then we gotta load it again. Let's pretend again. All right, bird over that's here. A, that's an eagle. Listen, bird over here. Where? Get ready. That's good. Now, that's good. Now, is, there safety, is the safety red or black? Black. Why do you have different ones than me? Well, it's a different gun. Yours is a 20 gauge. All 20 gauge shells, always, no matter where you go, 20 gauge shells are yellow. So the green shell is a 12 gauge. It won't fit in your gun. So, but you always know that you only pick up the yellow ones. Look at that. Yeah, it's a caterpillar. No, they're not coming this way. Wait, that one is. That one is. That's a dragonfly. I see one. Where? Right there. I think that's a dragonfly. <laughs> All right, pull the trigger when you get ahead of it. All right, one over here. All right. <laughs> All right. Remember, cheek on the, there's two, there's three. Wait. Probably shoot, shoot. too far away. No, too far, too far. But barely, it was real close. If they'd have come in any, any closer, all right, there's one right there. Can I shoot? Yep. <laughs> what? He's getting his money's worth. Where right. are those? those are us, go. Pull, pull up, ready? That was pretty good, Campbell. You flared him. All right, pump it. What does that mean? It means you got close. That you missed him. Now, if you get your first dive today, how are you gonna cook it? Say, uh, grilled, wrapping bacon, probably dipped in ketchup. <laughs> dipped in ketchup, all right. Hey, chicken's good dipped in ketchup. Why not dove? Fair enough. Bird, take safety off, safety off. Get ahead. You got it! <laughs> First shot. Let's Sa go get him. Safety on. So safe. Yeah, it's already I, it on? It is, it is. Heck yeah. Let's go get it. Nice job, Nolan! Nolan just got his first dove ever. Did you see that? Awesome, man. We got him! Awesome. Here it is, here it is. Look at that. Awesome job, man. Heck yeah. Very nice. 
You're gonna be on my wall someday. I don't know if it's gonna be on your wall, but definitely be on your dinner plate tonight. <laughs> You're gonna be my dinner tonight. Are you gonna put ketchup on it like you said or no? Yep. Yep. Here comes one, Dad. Get ready, get ready. Shoot it. Oh, you almost got it. Pump it. Nope, you got to pump. Oh, there you go. Did I get it? No, you missed it, but that's okay. You were close. Right here, get ready. Take your safety off. Oh! How do you... It. Get your finger off. How? Get ready, get ready. No, nope, no, nope, too far away. Sweet. Gonna shoot? Sure. Get ready. See this bird coming? Yeah. I'm getting it. Aim, aim. Pump it. Get right here's another one right here. Can you get it? All right, pump it. Get this bird right there. Pump it. Hold on, there's, no, there's none in there now. You just shot your barrel hot. Now that I got the rest. I thought we were gonna have doves on the grill. It's looking kind of like if we get one, we're gonna have to make dove soup. And uh, if we don't hit one, we're gonna have to just have rock soup. You ever had rock soup? No. You just put a rock in there and boil it up and eat the broth. Ew. Well, better shoot a dove. <laughs> All right. Can I shoot? Yeah. Get ahead of it. Get ahead of it. No. Nope. It's like everything. Everything you've ever done. You love sports. You love volleyball, basketball. Were you any good the very first day you played volleyball? Mm, yeah, I was pretty good. No, I don't think so. I saw you as a little kid. It takes a practice. It takes a long time to get good shooting a shotgun. Where's the most beautiful place in the state of Kentucky to go fishing? Well, that depends on who you ask, but Cumberland River has to be near the top. So we're here at Helms Landing, and uh, we're gonna try to catch trout today. This is a great example of a place that you could just walk right down in, get in the water, don't have to get in very deep, and start catching fish. And we're gonna drift down a couple miles. What species of, of trout can we expect to catch today? Uh, well, we got three species of trout in the river. We have the rainbows. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have the browns, of course. Mm -hmm. And then the brook trout are relatively new to the stream, so it's been a really nice addition. Fantastic. Well, I appreciate you taking this today. I brought our entertainment. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're in for a good day. This yeah, is yeah. Uh, Tim Sloan. Tim. Uh, Mike, how you doing? Tim. Tim is director of our INE, and uh, He's got one week of work left, so ah. he, he figured no better way to do it than this right here. Fantastic. And a word of warning, I have never caught a trout on a fly rod. I've <laughs> caught bluegill, I've never caught a trout. <laughs> well, this is a great river to, to get that to get that trout in for you. We'll see. Well, a, we got you, we got you. And you got pliers in case I <laughs> snag Chad. Yeah, or we got a new earring, <laughs> one of the two. Give me an idea of what, what type of uh, rig we're gonna be fishing with here today. Well, we're gonna be using uh, some five weight fly rods okay and we're going to be doing a tandem rig so that okay. means we got two flies okay we're going to put a uh, heavier fly on top a lighter fly on bottom we got a, a pheasant tail like pattern up on top has a little by it tail in the back mm -hmm. and then we drop a uh, midge pattern or a pupa pattern underneath that so you, yep. depending on the water depth you're going to raise this strike indicator up and down and you've, you've got two flies and they're slightly different yes and yeah. they're going to be anywhere from two to four feet deep right yeah, yeah, give or take, and there might be some deeper holes where they might be deeper than four feet. Well, let's go catch a fish. <laughs> Absolutely, let's do it, guys. There you go. Haven't even got the boat launched, and you've already caught a trout. You got a brook trout. Yeah, how about that, baby? That's 
That's my uh, that's my first brook trout in Kentucky. There you go. Oh, is that right? Yeah. You don't think of brook trout when you think of Kentucky, but this is some of the best trout fishing in the whole eastern United States down here. And you know what the great thing is, is that we're right here at Helms Landing. You literally just walked in right from the ramp and started catching fish. So you did that and hadn't even been in the boat yet, have you? Well, beginner's luck. <laughs> Here we go. All right, what do you got on? I believe it's a brookie, but I'm not sure. And probably bigger than mine, because that's No, he's not are. very big. Pretty exciting, though. So this one's smaller than yours. Oh, that's good. Let's <laughs> keep it that way. I appreciate that. It's a brown trout. Little bitty one. I think we've only got about two and a half hours before they open the generators. We might want to get started and head to the boat. your chariot. <laughs> yeah, let me, guys, could you go a little faster? <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> oh yeah. If I'd known you could do this, I'd eat more. <laughs> there you go. Look at that thing. So on bigger fish, you want to make sure to let them run a little bit. Using this light fly line, if you pull too hard, it's going to snap or you're just going to rip that small hook right out of its mouth. So he did a real nice job. You don't want to fight them to exhaustion. You know, even if they do get really tired, and especially with our big fish that we have to fight for a while, once we get them in the net, we always make sure to revive them in the net before letting them go. And then when that fish swims out of the net by itself, then we know we got a healthy release. Here we go. All right. I believe this is number two. Species number two out of my Grand Slam today. No, it's not. You got two browns. Two browns. <laughs> what do you know? I figured there's no way I can catch two brown trout that size. See, Tim, that's why you get a guide. They net the fish for you. Absolutely. I get Thank them you, just sir. to untie my tangles. <laughs> <laughs> It's people like me are the reason there's not more guides. <laughs> so Tim, you've had a very interesting career with fish and wildlife because you actually served in several divisions. I have. I started out as a summer aide in fisheries. I was a, a krill clerk. I was a fisheries technician. I was a fisheries biologist. Then I moved over to wildlife division and I was an endangered species biologist. Then I was head of the non-game and endangered species um, program and then ended up in the division of information and education previous host, Tim Farmer, you guys worked in the same boat together. I was a biologist and he was a fisheries technician and we worked together in fisheries and Rick Hill, who's our department artist, was also a fisheries technician and we all worked together and eventually we all ended up in the Division of Information and Education, which was <laughs> kind of nice for us. Oh, oh that's all right. Good. That thing, that thing said, I'm out of here. See you later. And it is your first rainbow. That's a nice size rainbow right there. As far as thickness, she's really heavy. All right, guys, if you don't mind catching this fish that uh, always right here. I don't know, I can't handle him. Too big, too big to be caught. Get his head out, like you said. Good job. All right. It's a pretty fish. It's gonna nice, be close to 15 rainbow. Inches. Yeah, it's pushing that slot, that's for sure. Well, that's I'd say good. it's probably just under. Oh, come on, Mike. I think it's this just is, this over. This is TV, man. <laughs> just <laughs> over. You, you're supposed to add <laughs> length and weight. Tim, what, what point in time did, uh, did the Department of Fish and Wildlife and U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service decide that trout in uh, Cumberland River tailwaters would be a good idea. When they built the lake, it changed the temperatures, and so the warm water fishery was eliminated down here, and so they built that federal hatchery to mitigate the effects, and then, uh, of course, it's a partnership with the Department of Fish and Wildlife. We have uh, biologists like Dave Dreves that, that have done an awful lot of work on this river, and, uh, you know, created one of the best trout fisheries in, in Eastern United States. Nice. You're on fire now. That's a better one. That's a pretty one, yeah. That's a really good fish right there. 
you're someone who's liked to fly fish, you know, fly fish for a long time, but predominantly creeks and streams fishing for smallmouth and things like that. Now you're uh, getting down here and catching some nice trout on them. That's pretty awesome. It is, it, I gotta say, it's pretty great. <laughs> so that fish is in the slot. That one's over 15. So we would not be able to keep this fish if we were keeping fish. Now, now you're catching fish too big to keep, Tim. Well, I think it's got more to do with Mike telling me every move to make, tying on my flies, I didn't say anything flies. about that one. That was all you. See, the thing is, is that I'm fishing in front of this vacuum cleaner and getting Shoot. all of them. I think what it is, is I've turned off bigger fisheries than this. <laughs> <laughs> Kiss it, that Sloan's who you're fishing with. You've been with the department just about all your working life, right? I, I really have. I've enjoyed every minute of it. Yeah, there you go, no regrets at all. No, huh? absolutely not. Every job I've had in the department has been the best job. I've enjoyed all of them. My sweater is on and the lake temperatures are cooling. That means it's time to start thinking about the Alabama rig. The A-Rig, the Alabama Rig, the Umbrella Rig. We got extremely popular five or six years ago. And now if you're tour tournament fisherman, you obviously know what it is because you better have one on during most parts of the year. That is the, that is the thing about the Alabama Rig is this time of year and you know sometimes even in the fall, if you don't have one at least tied on, you are truly at a disadvantage. And it's, that, that's not necessarily even in the state of Kentucky. That's, that's really anywhere that you have a population of shad in the lake. That's right. And I'll tell you, it, it can be intimidating because there's a lot of pieces and parts and everything has to go together to make this work. Uh, there is, you know, you have not just one bait, you have an umbrella rig, you have heads, you have baits, and so everything has to work together. And even then, you need, you can't just throw it on any rod or reel. So there's a lot of different things going on that, that make a successful Alabama rig set up or one that's not. This is probably the most important part of it right here. You really want to use 60 to 80 pound braid. Yeah, 50, 50 to 80, anywhere in there, you're going to get this hung. It's got five hooks on it. I don't know about you, but me, that, that's, that's a good amount of money tied up in this. I want that braid so I can make sure I can get this back. Really, this is the first component. As you can see, it's got a way to attach it. It's got some wires. It's got uh, little spinner blades that, that swim on there. This one has five. Now, after that, you've got hooks. Obviously, with your hooks, you can have all the different sizes of hooks as well as weights as well. As far as weights go, um, just from my personal experience, you know, around here, whether you're fishing from 10 to 20 foot water, this I think you've got eighth ounce. Mm -hmm. um, that seems to be about the best. It is one eighth as far as fishing it in varying water water uh, you know depths. And of course, you have your swim baits. These are the 3.8s and the rib. Now you're throwing one that's actually got the slick, mm -hmm. no ribs, a smaller profile. So it's all preference. I will say that it often is best to have different colors on that to give a fish something to isolate on that Alabama rig. And more often than not, I would also put the different colors on the bottom or even the middle, as in that's where they usually, they'll tend to bite anyways. But so yeah, vary the colors, absolutely. And so there's no way that you don't have to put these on there any particular way, up or down or nothing. It's just you. you no, that on. is the one thing I will say is that if you do, or if you are going to vary the colors, you'll see that the Alabama rig is going to run like this to the water column. So we have some varying colors on the bottom. And there you go, that's it. That's it, so. This thing here has probably won more bass tournaments in the last five years than any other lure. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> it's probably got more second and third places too. Now, if you're just a weekend fisherman and you wanna catch more fish, this is also a great technique. Um, just uh, give it, it out there. Yeah, it doesn't matter who you are. Um, it's a great technique and th that's one other thing. There's no really wrong way to fish it. For the most part, it's a chunk and wine. Just a nice, sl slow, steady retrieve is gonna be the ticket. We'll talk a little bit more about how to cast it once we get out in the water, but I think that's, uh, that's our next step. Let's, uh, let's get this boat in the water and uh, go out there and see what we can't let's catch, catch on this thing. <laughs> oh, there's one. Small man. Let's see what color, what color he hit. Which one did he hit? Oh, he hit the, uh, well, he's got two. We'll, we'll call it the jackal. Yeah. Nice, uh, Very nice, pretty small. Very pretty fish. So, Drew, what type of year do you like, and what type of water conditions do you like to fish 
the Alabama rig the most. Ideally, it's going to be February through April, depending on what kind of year we're having. This year, it's been kind of unseasonably warm, so we've kind of spring forwarded things forward. There's two things. Water temps are somewhere between 48 and 55, probably is prime for the Alabama rig. And then uh, another thing is, you know, we're down here at Laurel, the first thing when we got down here, we're kind of hunting some uh, more stained water. So you don't want crystal clear water, but at the same time, you don't want mud. And this right here is a kind of nice in-between. That's uh, prime ingredients to, to have a really good good day of fishing with Alabama rig. Which one did that one hit? Same one? Same one as the last one. I may have to put 10 of that same exact bait on mine. <laughs> we showcased, you know, the line and putting the rig together. Tell me a little bit about the equipment that is best for throwing this technique. So one part is the reel. I want a reel that I'm not going to trash it by throwing Alabama rig. So I'm going to buy a reel that can stand up to that. He's foul hooked. <laughs> and the second thing is having the right rod. You know, whenever we we're loading this up, you need a rod that one, has a lot of power, you can throw two to five ounces, but at the same time has a, has a tip to where I can get some accuracy with it, I can lay it softly in the water. Well, we got about another hour before dark. The big fish ought to come up here and feed in a minute. Let's try to put a big one in the boat, what do you think? I'm game with that. There's one, good one too. Oh God, oh, what a, a large mouth. Big fish. Bring this way. Nice. Look at the belly on that thing. Oh, we've been out fishing around, running, running around, and uh, trying to find some stained water. And we thought, you know what? With this evening coming and the sun being down, maybe we can get on the main lake. Look at that belly on that fish. It's been eating a few shad. Yeah, it, uh, it's 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 been eating them five at a time. It looks like. <laughs> that's, <laughs> well, that's one of them. That's a really good fish. So there you go. You talk about a rig fish. This big piece of wire coming through. A big smart fish won't hit it. There you go. There's a four pounder. So if you're looking to catch more fish and you've never tried the Alabama rig, it's a good technique to put in your arsenal. Put that in your tackle box. Make sure you get the right gear to, to throw it. You might ultimately have some of the best days of fishing your entire life when the conditions are right. If you can hit that window when the water and the weather and everything is lined up for the Alabama rig, I mean, it will show you amazing things. Yeah. Now let's check in and see who else has been out having fun in this week's Ones That Didn't Get Away. Here we have Benson Haggard with a nice catfish caught at a Finns Lake in Southgate, Kentucky. This fish was caught while fishing with his papaw. Congratulations. Here we have a nice gobbler taken by Dennis Ray in Oldham County. Nice job. Check out the size of this largemouth bass caught by Karen Haggard at Kentucky Lake. Nice fish. Here's a really nice 10 point buck taken by Bradley King in Owen County, Kentucky. Congratulations. Here we have a nice channel catfish caught by a seven year old Hunter Duel. This was his very first channel catfish ever caught in a family farm pond. Nice job. Check out the smile on Jay Nicholson of Clay County with his largemouth bass caught at a family farm pond. Caught this fish on a Zoom Smoke Purple Soft Plastic. Nice job. Braxton Frederick of Lexington, Kentucky caught his very first fish at a Finns Lake at Southland Christian Church in Nicholsville, Kentucky. Nice job. It's never too early to start fishing. Check out Fletcher Blankenship's first fish, a nice largemouth bass caught in Ohio County. Nice job. Here we have brothers Zach and Noah from Georgetown, Kentucky. This was their first turkeys ever and they doubled while reaping for these turkeys. Nice job. Here we have Troy Webb with a nice four and a half pound largemouth bass caught at Kentucky Lake. Congratulations. Here's Todd Goff from Ohio County with a nice three and a half pound largemouth bass caught on Sled Creek at Kentucky Lake. Nice job. Here we have Mark Smith from Muhlenberg County with two really nice largemouth bass caught at Bashir Lake in Dawson Springs, Kentucky. Six year old Henry Smith caught this nice channel catfish at Rough River Lake in Grayson County. Nice job. Here we have 11 year old Luke Parker with a nice largemouth bass caught at a private pond in Russell County. Nice fish. Do you have a hunting or a fishing photo that you'd like to share? Well, Kentucky Field is now accepting emailed photos of the ones that didn't get away. We will no longer accept photos sent through the mail. Email your photo to us at kyfield.ones at ky.gov. Hunting and fishing on private property is a privilege always ask permission and thank the landowner. Until next week, I'm your host, Chad Miles, and I hope to see you in the woods or on the water. 
more Kentuckia Field is available at your fingertips. Whether by smartphone or desktop, you'll find extra tips, photos, even behind the scenes video on our social media pages. Join the conversation and stay in the woods or on the water longer when you follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Simply search Kentucky Field on your favorite app.